So what's merge mining, right? Merge mining is when script miners are doing the same amount of work, but they're producing Litecoin and Dogecoin blocks at the same time. So it's kind of a free lunch. They're, they are, um, they're not doing more work, and they're getting twice the benefit. They're getting both Doge and Litecoin from, from mining. Um, so in, in a sense, we're sharing the security budget of both, both coins, right? So it, you can think of if it's like a house, two houses next to each other, the security guards, the same security guards are protecting both, both houses at the same time. So same cost, and in this case, script miners are mining both Doge and Litecoin at the same time, and we reach uh, 500 terahash um, per second. So 500 terahash is a lot of hash rate. Right? You can't really compare it to, to Bitcoin hash rate because it's a different algorithm. When I created Litecoin, I was using my uh, computer to, to mine Litecoin. If I remember correctly, I, my computer was doing uh, about like 10 kilo hashes per second. Kilo is a thousand hash. After that, there's mega hash, which is a million hash, giga hash, which is a billion hash, and tera hash, which is one trillion hash. And right now we're doing 500 trillion, hash, trillion hashes a second, right? Compared to when my computer was doing only 10,000 hashes per second. That is incredible amount of growth in terms of security. So Litecoin, as you know, right now, uh, we produce 12.5 Litecoins uh, per block every two and a half minutes. And that's worth about $625 today. And that's about uh, $360,000 of, um, Litecoin produced a day. And that's effectively a proxy for how much security is protecting the network. Um, and the next halving is in 280 some days. So that's gonna get cut in half. But because Dogecoin is being merged man with Litecoin, Doge produces about um, $600 a day, or sorry, a minute, which is about $845,000 a, a day. So as you can see, Dogecoin network is actually giving out more in block rewards to, um, to protect the Litecoin network than Litecoin is today. Um, and that would change over time, right? Litecoin could reduce, the, the price could go up, so there's, there's some demands going on. But what's interesting is that Dogecoin has tail emission. Um, what tail emission means is Dogecoin's block rewards go on forever without decreasing. So the security for Dogecoin will, if the price remains the same, it will be the same. There's no decrease in security. So, this is a very interesting experiment, right? Bitcoin doesn't have that. Some coins have tail emission, like Monero. Um, uh, so it's, it's all an experiment. We don't know what actually works, but Litecoin is doing something actually different from Bitcoin because with Dogecoin, we actually have tail emission, and that would, over time, that could protect the network better than what Bitcoin has. We'll see, right? Uh, next slide, please. So, network security. We doubled our, um, our hash rate over the last four years. Doubled our security even though the price got halved, or sorry, the, the, um, the block rewards got halved. So that's great. So next thing I wanna talk about is um, market capitalization. As we know, um, the price hasn't moved much, right? It's gone up and down, but over the past four years, it's, it's about the same. So we're about close to $4 billion market cap. Next slide, please. And the exchange liquidity in terms of how much money is traded on exchanges is about the same. So not much progress there, um, but I wanna talk about merchant support. So four years ago, we had like nine plus major merchant processors supporting um, Litecoin, helping merchants accept Litecoin. Next slide, please. And over the past four years, we added quite a few um, merchant processors, right? One of the major ones is, is BitPay. So BitPay, um, BitPay started in, I think like 2012 or even 2011. I contacted the founders of BitPay back in like 2012, 2013, asking them about Litecoin support. So back then they were Bitcoin only and they kind of just laughed at me and said like, they're, they're not gonna support Litecoin. Um, but I didn't give up, right? I'll, almost like every year, every two years, I kept contacting them, talking about adding Litecoin. Eventually, um, they started changing their minds, right? They added, um, they added more than just Bitcoin. They added uh, Dogecoin, they added Bitcoin Cash, and a few years ago, they finally like decided to add Litecoin. And 
it's been a huge success, right? I, I basically told them, if you add Litecoin, you're going to see a huge, um, a lot of people buying with Litecoin. They didn't believe me, right? But they eventually did add it. And next slide, please. And this is a chart that we see on, on Bitcoin stats page. Right now, Litecoin usage is 22% 20, of all uh, BitPay uh, payments. And that's a little bit less than half of Bitcoin usage, right? Bitcoin is still the king of cryptocurrency. Um, but once Litecoin was added, it quickly overtook Doge, quickly overtook Ether, and it's, it's more than Ether and Doge combined. And this was in July, at, and I believe, like, if I had to bet, it's still going up, right? So Litecoin is being used today, and BitPay is, is the largest uh, payment processor, crypto payment processor in the world, right? They support um, thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of merchants. So definitely there's, there's huge uptick in, in Litecoin usage. Next slide, please. The next thing I want to talk about is, is Speedin. Um, Speedin by Flexa has been, has been huge for, for Litecoin. Who here has actually used um, the Speedin app and used Litecoin to pay for stuff? And we got a few here. Um, so Speedin supports Litecoin, right? They, um, it's kind of like a gift card where you can create a QR code and the merchant will accept it as a gift card, and it, you're just paying Litecoin on the fly. Um, I, I use Speedin like almost every week. I go to like Chipotle or, or some of the other merchants they support and, um, and buy with Litecoin. But, but whenever I do that, um, next slide please. I feel like this guy, All right? I'm like excited about using Litecoin, but no one really knows. The, the, the person uh, accepting my payment thinks I'm just paying with a gift card, but I'm actually paying with Litecoin. Um, so this is huge, right? So you can basically use Litecoin like, in tons of places be thanks to like, BitPay, thanks to Speedin. Um, next slide, please. Um, so merchant count, there's just too many, right? It's, it's just amazing how much um, growth there is in terms of merchant adoption. Uh, thanks to BitPay and, and uh, people like uh, Flexa. Um, so lastly, I want to talk about currency usage. Right? So Litecoin is, in the end, it's money, right? If you're not using, if it's not, if it's not being used, then what's the point? Right? So number of transactions um, has grown quite a bit since four years ago. Next slide, please. This is um, Bitcoin and Litecoin usage transactions um, per day. And as you see, Litecoin initially was nothing compared to Bitcoin. But over the past few years, it's about half of Bitcoin uh, transactions now. So that's, that's pretty impressive growth. And Bitcoin, obviously, um, it's still more popular. People still use it. Fees are higher in Bitcoin. And that is, that is, that is expected. Um, but as we see, Litecoin is just being used more and more. Um, next slide. So today it's about 100,000 transactions per day. So about four times as much as four years ago. And next thing I want to talk about is how much is being sent, right? What's important is value being sent over the Litecoin network, right? So how much money is being moved um, in Litecoin? Next slide. This is um, a graph of just how much money is moved over the Litecoin network. And as you can see, there's, um, there's ups, ups and downs. When, when, there's a, um, when there's a crypto boom, people use Litecoin more. Just a lot of times, it's people sending coins to exchanges to buy or sell. Um, and, but the, the important thing is that it's, it's constantly still growing, right? The curve is still an up, up and to the right. Next slide. And today, we, we spend about, or not we, but in terms of value move, it's about a billion dollars uh, moved on the Litecoin network a day, right? And we've, over, over the past 10 years, it's more than a trillion dollars of money being moved, value being sent on the Litecoin network. And that's um, 11 years of nonstop, no downtime network, right? So that's pretty amazing. Um, next thing I want to talk about is active addresses. So active addresses is how much how many addresses are being used on the Litecoin network a day? So that's a good proxy of like how many users are using it. Right? People create new addresses every time they, they send a transaction. So number of active addresses is a good proxy for number of users. So let's take a look at that. Next slide. 
This is um, active addresses over time. And as you can see, it's the same as every other graph. It's up and to the right. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and today, it's about 200,000 uh, active addresses every day. So about a three times growth over four years ago. Um, pretty good. And let's talk about block size. So block size is how much space in the block it's uh, Litecoin, in Litecoin blocks, right? Next slide. And same thing. We've grown about four times over the last four years. Next slide. Um, this is the just recently. So there, there are some spikes, but um, on average, it's about, what is it? Like, next slide, about 80 uh, kilobytes. So it's still pretty small. Litecoin has a one megabyte block, so there's still a lot of room for growth. Um, next slide. So I want to add two things to metrics of success. So one is accessibility, how easy it is for people to get into Litecoin, right? To be able to uh, purchase their first Litecoin, um, get Litecoin from ATM, and stuff like that. The next thing is brand awareness. How, how much do people actually hear about Litecoin in mainstream media? How much do people actually um, run across Litecoin? I mean, everybody knows about Bitcoin, right? But not everybody knows about Litecoin. So brand awareness is very important. Um, next slide. So accessibility, in the past four years, like Litecoin is one of the first four coins that was added to Robinhood. Robinhood is one of the most popular uh, mainstream trading applications. And you've been able to buy Litecoin on Robinhood um, for many years now. Who's actually used Robinhood um, to buy Litecoin? Quite a few of you. And recently, they, they're allowing people to um, withdraw their Litecoin. So it's actually a, um, a place where people can buy and withdraw Litecoin to their own, own, own wallet. Next slide. Um, PayPal. PayPal started accepting Litecoin um, last year. Right, you can buy Litecoins. Um, who's used PayPal to buy a Litecoin? Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. So PayPal is one of the few places where um, I actually never talked to them about adding Litecoin. Like BitPay, I keep bugging them about adding Litecoin, right? But PayPal was a surprise to me. Um, when I found out they're going to add Litecoin, that just came out of, came out of nowhere, right? Someone, a Litecoin supporter, talked to PayPal and convinced them to add Litecoin as one of the four coins they first supported. It was Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. And that was, that was huge. And I think PayPal, everyone's um, heard, of, heard of PayPal before. Everyone's used it. Um, and now you can easily buy, buy um, Litecoin on PayPal. And they have this whole section about um, educating people about cryptocurrency and Litecoin and Bitcoin. And I think it's just great, great for mainstream adoption. Next slide. And uh, Coinstar. So Coinstar started, added Bitcoin a few years ago, and more recently they added Litecoin and a few other coins. Right, this is actually a picture I took of my local Coinstar. I actually went there, um, saw that, saw the Litecoin logo, and, and bought some Litecoin. It was very easy. Um, yeah, you guys should go check, check out Coinstar. It's, it's pretty much everywhere. You can convert your coins to, to cash and use that cash to, to buy Litecoin. Um, next slide. And um, another adoption, mainstream adoption is, is like something like Ballet Wallet, right? Ballet is a sponsor of, Litecoin, of the Litecoin Summit. And all of you guys actually have a free Ballet Wallet in your bag, right? Um, so Litecoin makes it, uh, Ballet makes it very easy for people to gift Litecoin and, and all, all the other cryptocurrencies. Um, but the special thing about um, the Ballet Wallet in your bag is um, I want to announce something special, right? So if you take out your Ballet Wallet in your bag right now and look at it. So if you look at your wallet, it might look a little bit different than what's on screen. What's on screen, the Link Hotel is in blue, right? So we actually put one out of every 10 wallets in your bag has a blue link hotel. If you, if you find one with a blue link hotel, that actually has one Litecoin in it. So check your bag. Don't throw away your ballet wallet. Um, who's, who's got one? Nice. Nice. So um, this is thanks to, thanks to GetHedge. GetHedge supported um, this initiative and donated um, 30 Litecoins to the Litecoin Foundation and put it in those wallets. So go check out GetHedge when you get a chance.
Um, and also, obviously, these are, these are rare, right? The, the blue hotel ones are, are pretty rare, so keep them. Don't spend them. Um, next, next slide, please. So um, also, ATM adoption, right? ATMs are, are very, a good, easy place for people to, um, to buy Litecoin, to withdraw Litecoin from an ATM machine. And if you look at, this is something I just grabbed from yesterday from um, Coin ATM Radar. Litecoin is the second most adopted cryptocurrency in ATM. This is ATMs worldwide. There's about 31,000 ATMs that accept Litecoin. Yeah. And obviously, Bitcoin is accepted more than Litecoin. But if you look at all the other coins like Dogecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, they're all a lot less than than Litecoin. So it's great. You can go to, you can find an ATM nearby. There's quite a few in Vegas you can find. Um, just go to ATM, Coin ATM Radar. They have like a map of all the ATM locations. You can go to an ATM, um, put in some cash, and just buy Litecoin. Next slide, please. So in terms of accessibility, mainstream adoption, it's been pretty big the last four years. Like Robinhood, um, uh, I put eBay there, but it's actually PayPal. Uh, I get confused sometimes. Um, PayPal, Coinstar, Ballet, 31,000 ATMs. Um, it's pretty, been pretty successful the last four years. So next slide. Brand awareness, right? What's important is do people hear about Litecoin? So these are like four different times we're on like uh, mainstream media, um, Fox Business News, um, Bloomberg, CNBC, where they just show the Litecoin um, ticker sim, ticker price and everything when they talk about cryptocurrency. They do that all the time. Whenever they talk about cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, they just show, show Litecoin. And that helps with mainstream adoption, right? People see it. Um, people ask about what's Litecoin, and they, they Google it and figure out what Litecoin is. Um, a funny story about that. One time, as you know, um, Mike Novogratz, right? You guys all know the story. He went on, I think it was CNBC, and he complained about Litecoin being a ticker symbol on on, um, and they actually, he actually made CNBC like remove Litecoin and another coin, right? The other coin he, he made them add, he said um, CNBC should support Luna instead of Litecoin, right? So as you all know, like what happened to Luna, right? Luna is not tested, right? Litecoin's been around for 11 years. There's a reason why CNBC puts Litecoin there. It's been battle tested. It's one of the main currencies that's been around for over a decade, right? So you don't just like put something like Luna, which has been around for a few years, and now it's like nothing um, on there. Next slide, please. The other kind of brand awareness is just um, like on TV shows. We see Litecoin every now and then. We see Bitcoin quite a bit too. Um, on Simpsons a few years ago, they showed like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, and talked about cryptocurrency. Um, re more recently, NBC Peacock had a TV series that had someone transfer Litecoin using uh, Light Wallet which was pretty amazing. Um, next slide. So brand awareness has been pretty, pretty good the past four years, right? And I expect that to continue. So if you look at what's happened the last four years, it's been amazing, right, in terms of adoption. But there's an elephant in the room, right? What's, what's the elephant in the room? The price. Next slide, please. So. What, what about the price? Like, why hasn't the price moved much, right? So I don't know. I don't control the price. Um, what I do know is that um, price kind of follows adoption, right? It's not the other way around. If there's no, if there's no value being created by, by Litecoin, um, the price won't move. And if price goes up when there's no value created, do you know what that's called? Speculation, yeah, but it's actually called a Ponzi scheme, right? There's no value created. People who invest early, price goes up, they sell, and the new people are left holding the bag that didn't really add any value, right? And over time, it would just go crash back down to zero. So that's not what we were trying to create here. Um, next slide, please. So what we're trying to create is, is something of sustainable value, right? Something that, um, something that people actually use and not just because of the price, right? They're not here because they just want to make money. They want to use money. They want to store money in Litecoin because it's a good store of value. It's good methods of payment and good means of exchange. 
So that's why Litecoin Foundation, we're here to um, promote adoption of Litecoin. We're not here to um, just promote increase in value, right? We want to promote adoption, and we believe the price will come. Next slide, please. So I'm going to give you two options, right? Let's say four years later, Litecoin Summit 2026. I come back here on stage, and this is what happened. Price went up to $500, which would be amazing. Everyone would be happy. But no, adop no new adoption, no increase in um, hash rate, no new payment process merchants, no increase in usage, no more brand awareness. Everything stays flat, right? That's option number one. Next slide, please. Option number two is price is relatively flat, $60, but we get like PayPal, eBay, Square, Stripe support, paying with Litecoin, 10 times increase in everything. Um, you can spend Litecoin at Walmart, at Amazon, at Target, and um, Litecoin is talked about everywhere, right? Joe Rogan, Jimmy Kimmel, every, all mainstream media talks about Litecoin all the time. So these two options, which one would you choose? Think, okay. <laughs> Think about this, okay? I know everybody's good. People are going to say two because that sounds, like, that sounds like a better thing to say. And if you don't say two, people are going to look at you and say you're not a real Litecoiner. But think about it four years later. Which one would make you more happy? Okay? Who would raise your hand if you, if you think option one would be, make you more happy? Half of you are lying. Um, <laughs> So um, who, who thinks option two would make you more happy? OK, good. So I think option two would make me more happy. Um, that's because I don't own a lot of Litecoin, so option one's not going to do anything for me. Um, but reason why is um, this is actually building value. right? We're actually building value. People are actually using Litecoin, um, and it's becoming useful. right? And, and we're, creating, um, we're trying to create money. right? We're trying to create something that is useful as money. So. Option two, people use it as money, and it, it's a store of value, right? The price doesn't go up a lot. It, it keeps your value, right? That's, that's, that's one of the most important things about money is, is store of value um, over the long run, right? And that's why gold has been um, great money over, over millennia. Um, next slide, please. So obviously, people are asking, why not both, right? Why can't we have both adoption and price increase? And we can. I think, but the most important thing is I want to focus on adoption, and the price will, will fix itself over time, right? If you focus on price and the price goes up, but there's no adoption, then you're just creating a Ponzi scheme, and that's not what, what I'm here for. So, so that's, that's my kind of thinking about the next four years, right? We want to focus on adoption, um, everything I just talked about, and let the price do its thing. Next slide, please. So. What actually is Litecoin, right? What, um, what makes Litecoin valuable? Why do people use it? Um, I'll just cover a little bit about it. Next slide. So this is stuff I jotted I jot down pretty quickly over. Um, actually, I created this slide yesterday. <laughs> I'm a procrastinator. I don't do my slides until the night before. Um, so it's fast and easy to spend, low fees to spend, low cost to store. Irreversible transactions, censorship resistant transactions, scarce and fungible. I think these are really good properties of money and what makes Litecoin valuable. Let's go over each one one by one. So next slide. Litecoin is fast and easy. So this is a QR code for, uh, for my Litecoin wallet. Um, to test how fast and easy it is, you guys can scan it with your phone and send me some Litecoins. <laughs> I'm waiting. What's that? No, you don't get it back. <laughs> okay, I already got some. Thank you. Thanks for donating to the Charlie Leaf Fund. Um, yeah, it's it's fast and easy. You just scan a QR code, you send. The crazy thing is that you can um, you can like try to buy something. On a with a local merchant and send that QR code to someone in China and ask them to pay for your, pay for your food, right? And they can easily send money cross country, cross borders. And this is not something that is easy for any other payment method. You can't do it with, with cash. You can't do it with gold. You can't do it with 
A lot of times you can't even do it with credit cards. Most of the time you can't do it with credit cards. Credit cards don't work uh, across borders. Um, but with Bitcoin, Litecoin, cryptocurrencies, you can. And that's one of the most amazing things. It's um, cross borders. And as you know, you probably spent um, less than a penny to send those Litecoins to me. Um, next slide. So the fees to spend is, is low. It's, it's very cheap to spend. And that's important. Next slide. Low cost to store. So you guys all have a, um, a ballet wallet. It's, it's fairly inexpensive. And that's just one easy way to, to store um, Litecoin. And that's not the, that's not the same for, um, for things like gold and other currencies. They're just expensive to store and to protect. With cryptocurrency, you can, store, you can even store it in your brain. Right? You can use brain wallets. No one can actually access it. And only you remember the, your private keys, and you store uh, cryptocurrencies that way. Next slide. Um, irreversible transactions. So we talk about network security, hash rate. Why that's important is in order to attack Litecoin, you need to um, spend that much money to as much money as the hash rate that is supporting Litecoin. Right? So you have to overrun the network. And that's expensive. We're talking about like hundreds of millions of dollars today to attack Litecoin. Um, and so that means when the Litecoin transaction confirms, um, you can't, it won't be reversed. Right? It will cost too much to reverse that transaction. And that's important. When you send money to someone, um, you don't want that transaction to be reversed because you already got the goods that you paid for. Next slide. And for the, with the same security and decentralization, we have censorship resistant. Right? That's very important for money. You don't want people to be able to tell you what you can or cannot do with your money. And that's how I got into Bitcoin in the first place. I was um, uh, back in like 20, 2010, 2011, I was playing like poker online. And all of a sudden, one day, the government shut down all the, all the poker online websites because they deem poker um, illegal, right? They don't want you to gamble with your own money. And the way they did it was they, block, they blocked all the payment processors from sending money to the poker sites. And I just, like, I realized that that's kind of, that's stupid. Like, why would the government be able to block me from playing poker? I'm not doing any harm to anyone. I'm just using money that I earn to play a game, actually a game of skill. It's not even a game of luck, right? Um, so when Bitcoin came about, I just realized this is like a better form of money than, than fiat currencies. You can't block it. Governments can't block Bitcoin payments. And likewise, they can't block Litecoin payments. Um, recently in the news, um, I'm sure you've all heard uh, Bitcoin BSV, Bitcoin um, Satoshi's vision, got um, censored, right? There's some miners that are mining BSV and basically mining anti blocks and blocking all transactions. So if you're trying to send BSV today, it won't, it won't work because it, it just got censored. Um, this won't happen with Litecoin because Litecoin and Dogecoin is dominant in the script mining uh, hash rate. So that's very important, being dominant in the, in the mining hash rate that your coin uh, works in. So, so yeah, so Litecoin is censorship resistant. Um, next, scarcity is, is important too, right? As we know, like, the US government printed, or uh, US dollar, uh, like crazy the past few years due to COVID and other things. And that just devalues all the currency in your hands. So with Litecoin, there's a total of 84 million Litecoins that will ever exist, and nobody, not even me, can change that. And that's, that's pretty amazing. Um, and lastly, I'll talk about fungibility. So fungibility is, um, is the concept that if you're using uh, some money, every, every unit of that money is equal and equivalent to every other unit. So one example is I like to use is if you go to a store and pull out a $20 bill from your wallet, it doesn't matter which $20 bill you pull out. The merchant's going to accept it, right? Obviously, if you have a fake one, they won't accept it. But any real $20 bill, it doesn't matter what it is, they will accept it as $20. Um, but today, that's not the case with, with Bitcoin. Um, every time you use Bitcoin, you, you leave a trail, right? There's this history attached to the coin. So if, um, if you send coins to a darknet marketplace or to somewhere a merchant may not like, and then you send those coins to a merchant, they can like, deny your transaction. They can say, I don't like um, where the coin has been, and they don't give you the goods. Or exchanges can, can just confiscate your money and don't give it back to you, right? And that's not good for money, right? For, with money, you want to be able to, to spend it anywhere. You don't want people to 
be able to block you because of um, your money. They don't, your money should be as good as anyone else's money. So that's why we, we added MWeb to, to Litecoin, which launched this year. Next slide. So, so MWeb, I want to talk a little bit about like privacy versus fungibility. Right? You hear that all the time, privacy, fungibility. A lot of times it's, it's interchangeable. Um, privacy is something that is required for fungibility. Right, so if without privacy, money can't be fungible. So you need some sort of privacy to, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, um, like, like emails, right? So, um, so privacy, I think it's, it's, it's a right. Uh, financial privacy, thing, I think it's a human right. So everyone should have financial privacy. When I, whenever I spend Litecoin, I don't want someone to know how much money I have in my bank account. When you spend your dollar, people don't know how much money you have in your bank account. So that's why MWeb, privacy and fungibility, I think is important. Um, next slide, please. So the thing with privacy is there's always a trade-off with scalability and ease of use, right? Very Something that's very private makes it um, the technology makes it hard to scale and harder to use. So if you ever use something like um, Monero or Zcash, uh, they're, they're harder to use. They're, they're not as scalable as Litecoin, um, as just base Bitcoin, Litecoin. Um, they're not as easy to use. Sometimes it takes longer to create transactions. Um, so there's always a trade-off. But I think there's a, there's a sweet spot, and that's what, that's what we're targeting. Next slide, please. We're, talking of, we're targeting a privacy fungibility sweet spot that is um, just private and fungible enough for, for normal people, but it's still as easy to use as just regular Bitcoin Litecoin transactions. And that's what we're doing with MWeb. Um, so it's, it's hard, right? So what, so what is um, just enough privacy and fungibility? That's, that's a hard thing to, to kind of grasp, right? How much privacy is enough? So one example I like to use is, um, let's go back to the house analogy, right? If Litecoin is a house, um, what it is right now without MWeb is just a glass house, right? Next slide, please. It's like a glass house. You can see everything, right? Everything's transparent on blockchain. Everything you do is, uh, is public. So, but is that a house you want to live in, right? You're not doing anything shady, you're not dealing drugs, you're not doing anything bad, but do you want to live in this house? No, right? You still want some form of privacy, right? Next slide, please. But do you want to live in this house, right? No windows, very strong doors, no one can get in now, you can get in now, but no one can see what you're doing, right? That's not very friendly, user-friendly, that's not ease of use, right? But what, next slide, what Litecoin and MWeb is kind of like this house. Right? It's transparent, but you can, you can pull the shades. You can close the shades if you want. Does that mean you're doing something nefarious when you close the shades? No, you just want some sort of um, financial privacy. Right? You don't want people to know how much money you have and where you're spending it because it's private. It doesn't necessarily mean you're doing anything bad. It's just you want some privacy. So that's what we're trying to achieve. Right? Kind of um, the sweet spot, combination of both transparent and ability to be private. So when you move your funds to MWeb, you gain some sort of privacy, um, protect, pe protect yourself from, from others from knowing what, where you're spending your money and how much money you have. And that's the vision we're trying to achieve. Thank you. Next slide. So property is good money. I think Litecoin is checking off all these, right? All the properties is good money. And, um, and that's, that's what we want. So I'll keep working hard on improving all these properties and making Litecoin the best form of money ever. OK, next slide. So last thing I want to talk about, Satoshi Nakamoto. So I'm here to announce. Next slide that I'm not Satoshi Nakamoto. Um, sorry to disappoint. So some of you still don't believe me. Right? Some of you still think 
So I think it's actually, uh, yeah, you're right there. Master, master thinks I'm Satoshi Nakamoto. I'm here to prove to you today that I'm not Satoshi Nakamoto. <laughs> Good luck. Next slide. Because if I was Satoshi Nakamoto, if I were Satoshi Nakamoto, this is what I would do. I would sign a message saying, Craig Wright is a fraud, and just post it. Right? This is actually um, Satoshi's Genesis address. Um, that's a, the signature is, is made up. It's Photoshop. Master doesn't believe me. You can go check. Um, but now I said that, more people are going to go check to see if this is the actual right signature for, for this message. Um, believe me, it's not. Um, but feel free to check. <laughs> so this is what I would do, right? If I were Satoshi Nakamoto, I would just do this anonymously, right? So Craig Wright has been kind of causing havoc in, this, in, in the cryptocurrency community, claiming he's Satoshi Nakamoto without proving that he has funds, suing everyone. It's just a mess, right? So this, was, this would be what I would do. The fact that I didn't do this means I'm not Satoshi Nakamoto. Next slide. And I would do this. If I were Satoshi Makoto, Nakamoto, I would sign a message saying this. Um, unfortunately, I'm not, so I can't sign this message. So Litecoin is still not better than Bitcoin, sadly. But I'll leave it at that. Um, enjoy the summit. Thanks to all the sponsors. Um, check out all the presentations. We have David Burkett talking about MWeb. I think that's going to be a huge hit. Um, we have tons of great um, talks, and it's going to be a blast. Thanks, everyone, for coming, and enjoy the summit. Thank you. Give it up for definitely not Satoshi.